you think it's harsh on people going at Joe Root, bearing in mind he's not at, he's actually batting quite well? He's not actually the problem, or does he need to take the responsibility of what is happening in the team? Then I read in the media that Gary Kirsten had also applied for the England coach's job, right? And the coach's job went to Silverwood because his PowerPoint presentation was better. The, well, this is showing up. We can't play on hard, fast, bouncy wickets, and it also mm. showed up the lack of um, the lack of technique against spin bowling. And who yeah. got runs last year in India? Yeah, he, what has he got? Excellent fundamentals and mindset to back. And I have heard in England coaches say, "Don't leave. Leaving is a cop out." Do you think it's good that Ed Smith is now not with the team, or do you think he should still be there? Because maybe you could argue his selection was better than the selection that might be out in Australia. It's been nearly 2,342 days ago since England last won the Ashes, and that will now be extended due to England not managing to win the Ashes this year. All I can say to start off with is a happy new year to everyone. As usual, I'm joined by Darren and Raj. How are we doing, guys? Oh, good. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. DJ? Well, Happy New Year. I was doing all right till you mentioned 2,342 days. That's <laughs> yeah. it. There you go. Well, it's funny you said it, Darren. I, I, I suppose England fans would be happy that 2021 has sort of come to an end. Well, only if things change, they'll be happy, won't they? So, but who's well, to say they will? <laughs> as a, as a, you know, you, you watching them play, what were your thoughts of... Um, of the Ashes so far and of English performances? Um, not a total surprise. I am surprised we never com- uh, competed a bit more because I don't think this is the greatest Australian side I've ever seen. In fact, I know it's not the greatest Australian side I've ever seen. Mm. And I think we've surprised quite a lot of Australians as well as to how poor we've been. Um, I don't think we can blame the bowlers. I mean, there's arguments that we should have taken different bowlers and picked different sides, but it's it's a problem we've had for years and years. Our batting has been test match at test match level has been going slowly and slowly downhill. And that's due to varying reasons, white ball coaching and other things that I'm sure Raj will go into as well later on. Mm. But um, yeah, they're major, major issues. And another, I know you had a nice little, nice little, um, little record there, 2,342 days. It's been pointed out to me that the last test match we won in Australia was on January the 7th, 2011 so it's almost 10 years to the day we're recording this so there's another bit of good news for you Raj <laughs> some bad history there for for England um before I go into anything I've got to ask you last year you were moaning about the wickets in India right so <laughs> this time last oh. inning lasted 26 overs so that was three overs less then I think that I'm the bad test. Mm. So was the wicket okay? Wicket, wicket, wicket was fine, Raj. I, I, I have no complaints. I have no complaints about the, clarifying that. I have no right. complaints about the, the the wicket or anything. Or I, I, okay. I can't give any excuses really. I think it's got right, to the no, point. I, when I was watching the scores and I saw the overs, I just thought I must point that out to you. Um, <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Ollie. It seems that we. have we're um, ganging up on you, but there's it something does. else I've written down here, which I was going to say later, that um, England have been bowled out for less than 100 six times in the last four years. Heard that on a podcast, and they weren't all in India, were they? So, <laughs> no, exactly. No, no, I agree. I, I can... Raj, you, you've got me on side on, on this on, on this situation this year. I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to agree with that. But actually, coming into that, so, Raj, what is it? England, okay, Darren says that stat about England being bowled out under 100 so many times. Why is that happening every time? Is it to do with selection? Is it to do with the process coming up to Test Match Cricket? Why is that happening? No, it is because Rome wasn't built in a day. So, similarly, what you're seeing now is what you're reaping of what you have sown since 2008. Hmm. 2008, everything started going pear-shaped for the red ball game. Now, why is that? 2008 is around the time when IPL started. What happened with IPL starting? IPL starting meant the money power and the controlling power of the game shifted 
to somewhere other than England and Australia. Mm. Okay. So the people here who had actually invented T20, they forgot to patent it. Right. So while they were having their coffee and meetings, India ran away with it and Australia also went on to stage the big bash. So what actually happened? The money went from here. Now, in that scenario, the bosses here panicked. Okay. Because previously, I have been coming to this country since 1989 and living here since 2002. Okay. All this nonsense, we never heard of what started happening from 2008. Mm. Right? Especially in two things. Batting and spin bowling. These are the two main things. Anyone who bowls spin in first class cricket or higher, you can go and ask anyone. Go and ask a Swan, go and ask a Panasar, go and ask Ashwin, go and ask Jadeja, whoever you want. If they are of that stature, they have bowled loads of balls, millions of balls. Mm. You don't become a spinner by sitting and listening to sports psychologists. So Raj, would you say, so Jack, Raj. Hang on, hang on. That's the first part, right? Second part is batting. Okay. Batting is a long-term process. You bat at school level, club level. It's not instant entertainment. Now, if someone is not taught how to bat, right and told right from his formative years go out and whack it your wicket doesn't matter right then this is what you're going to get because other than root and milan no and stokes no one looks that they can play out three maiden overs mm. and that is not their fault i do not blame the players that is not their fault Raj, can I just go back to you mentioning about the spin bowling? So Jack Leach came in first game and let's say it wasn't his maybe his finest of games he's played for England. And then England bring him in, in again after sort of dumping him. Is that a bit, is that harsh from Jack Leach or would you say that that's just how cricket, how it goes? Yeah, you might find it harsh and Jack Leach will always find it harsh on himself. But if the captain doesn't have faith on you, a left arm spinner, is someone who's going to control the game between lunch to tea. Hmm. If a left arm spinner is not mm, controlling the game at going at about two and over, that game is gone between lunch to tea. If your, your left arm spinner can't go at nine and over, sorry, that doesn't happen. Hmm. Okay, you see any left arm spinner in the world who's decent, right? What do they go for? 2.5. That's the game goes away from a fielding side between lunch and tea. And that is where your left arm spinner gets you the control. Mm. Okay. If your left arm spinner can't get you the control, how is the captain going to have faith on him? No. Um, Darren, staying on the bowling subject, um, it was interesting. Dave, Dave Warner came out during, I think it was last week, saying the biggest problem, um, the problem. With England, they've been bowling too short. Would you, from watching that, would you agree with that? Well, yeah, it looks that way. I mean, they're definitely bowling a yard or so shorter than the um, Australian bowlers are bowling. And um, yeah, um, the ball's the ball's not swinging as much, but there is there is a lot of seam movement, especially on the last wicket, the SCG, mm. where, to be fair, England probably had the better of the conditions there. But Australia, sort of with Jimmy Anderson bowling absolutely out of his skin, managed to scrape, scrape, scrape their way to 260, whatever it was, which ended up being a, well, looked like being a pass score, but ended up being a score that's enough to beat England by an innings. So, um, yeah, it, but I'm, as I said earlier, I'm very, yeah, they, they could have bowled better, but I don't think we can lay this. Oh, it's boy. not just this. It's, we can't lay this on the bowling. The same Darren, as we can't lay the fact that we haven't won an away series for however long on the bowlers. There was maybe 
one notice, noticeable performance, bowling performance from Australia, and that was from Scott Boland, who came, who came in and uh, sort of stole the show at the MCG. Yeah, and and what is he? He's he's a very English type seam bowler. He's not quick, is he? Slippery no. medium pace, the sort of guy that would get fifty wickets in an English season. But so our guy should have been used to that. But I would also lay on the fact that that far, the the damage was done the evening before when Cummings bowled really really well and had us 30 for four. So the game was done by then anyway. So Raj, the biggest, most probably the biggest in the media at the moment is about Joe Root being captain, Chris Silverwood staying on to be coach. Do you think it's harsh on people going at Joe Root, bearing in mind he's not, act, he's actually batting quite well. He's not actually the problem or does he need to take the responsibility of what is happening in the team? Um. First, I'll come to your question, but before that, you're talking about length. When does someone not bowl full enough? When he is scared of getting hit. He's scared of getting driven. Also, if your batsmen don't give you enough runs, the bowler will not get the confidence to go full up. Because he's also thinking that I have to rein the game in. I have to rein the game in. I can't get driven down the ground or get driven for two fours in the over. Mm. So it's mm, the main thing is you have to put runs on the board. And you can't put runs on the board with two batsmen or three batsmen. Mm. Okay? That's the first part. I don't think Joe Root is to blame, but in this situation, he is going into battle where the other team has got AK-47s. He is going to battle with bows and arrows. So what is he going to do? So mm. what's the point in blaming Root? Then I read in the media that Gary Kirsten had also applied for the England coach's job. Right? And the coach's job went to Silverwood because his PowerPoint presentation was better. Hmm. Now, there's nothing more to say in that. Raj, why, why is that the case? Sorry? Why is it that a PowerPoint presentation means if you get the job or not? I don't know. It doesn't make any common sense to me, but this is what's been said in the media. That's what I have read. And... Uh, it happens in in England. It happens. I know. I have personally seen it, uh, experienced it. It's not about your cricket. It's more about your package. So, take the package. Hmm. Down. Anything to add on that? Yeah. I, I. I mean. I think it's very, very harsh on Brute. And um, seeing as the only other option we have is Ben Stokes. I mean, would you want to give it to him? I mean, I've heard whispers of Broad getting it, but all the time he's not 100% guaranteed of a place. You can't give it to him. But um, I'm going to quote Mark Butcher from another podcast. His thoughts are that um, Root and Silverwood are the wrong package, to use Raj's words, for the current situation. Mm. He said the current situation needs a strong captain and a strong coach because they're going to have to go to the ECB in the same way that... Um, Fletcher and Hussain did and say, this is wrong. We have to change things. We have to change when county cricket's played. We have to change the formats. We have to play on hard wickets. You know, so if, because the skill set to keep Darren Stevens away from your front pad is completely different to the skill set required to go and face these guys on hard Australian wickets. Mm. So, I mean, Joe Root did say that he feels we've picked the 18 best county players which he's going to say, because he's not going to say we've messed up here, we've picked the wrong side, is he? He's not going to... But on, based on that, if you're going to pick an England bowling attack based on county cricket, you'd have Darren Stevens, Simon Cook, Luke Fletcher, Chris Rushworth. And what, what do they all have in common? They all bowl 70 miles an hour, land it on the scene on green pitches in April. And nobody gets a run off them. So I, I would... I mean... I'm a big fan of Joe Root, and to be honest, I don't know if there's anyone else. As with Silverwood, I mean, the issue is, the big issue at the moment is he's in charge of everything. He picks a team, he's in charge of all three formats. Well, they were saying this is, this is why a selector would, is good, because the pressure's not all on Silverwood as such. I don't think it's anything to do with the pressure being on Silverwood. I think it's the mm. fact that you have three or four guys with knowledge in the room 
who I mean, there's no way Silverwood can watch every single one of the 18 counties and every single player on a day when they bat well, mm. or the day when they bowl well. So that's when I think it needed. I, I know that they don't like it because you have too many different opinions. But I think four or five guys on your selection committee, and if the captain's one of them, then the captain's one of them. Fine. But um, yeah, I'm not keen on the one person having the the whole role to himself. I think the last time that happened, sorry to be a bit of a badger, you won't remember this, was a guy who died recently. Ray Ellingworth had this in the 90s and that ended very badly as well. So I'm not sure that Devin, works. Yeah. Devin Malcolm issue happened then. Yeah, yeah. And... There you go, Ross, you go. Yeah. No, no. <laughs> I was going to say that, do you think, because obviously we, I think in a past podcast when we knew Ed Smith was part of the selection committee, I remember we all being a bit odd, but we were, you know, we weren't all with that and, you know, for it. Do you think it's good that Ed Smith is now not with the team or do you think he should still be there? Because maybe you could argue his selection was better than the selection that might be out in Australia. Listen, there's no point in being politically correct. There are certain points you have to understand here. The role of a coach in cricket is not the role of a coach in football and that is what a lot of people get wrong in cricket mm. the captain is the boss you go back in history right 70s or uh, west indies who was the boss clive lloyd uh, when australia were in their pomp who was the boss mark taylor steve war right when india were doing well who was the boss Kohli and Dhoni. When Pakistan were doing well, who was the boss? Imran Khan. Right? When Sri Lanka won the World Cup, who was the boss? Arjuna Ranatunga. When England was doing well, who was the boss? Hussein. Mm. Later, Michael Vaughan. Right? You don't remember the name of the coach. The coach is just a backroom staff at that level who's going to prepare you. India recently, who's the boss? Virat Kohli. Ravi Shastri is not the boss. Okay. So that is something people have to understand. Cricket and football are completely different games. Is it turning into football? Some people are trying to. Do you, do you think it will succeed? No, the, uh, this has been happening in England for quite some time. There is a tug of war for power because all coaches want to be like Alex Ferguson. But in cricket, it doesn't work. As simple as that. And uh, secondly, there's a really good article Mark Ram Prakash wrote the other day in The Guardian, I think I read it. And he said, he was the England batting coach. And he said, when he... Uh, he said this year when... Um, KL Rahul and Rohit Sharma who are the two top players in T20 cricket, when they played it on green tops, Anderson and Broad they played and managed that situation because of their strong fundamentals which a lot of other countries, especially subcontinent countries, harp on strong fundamentals mm. right and he said, I went to um, Lords the other day and I was talking to an MCC coach and he said, I just tell my boys to whack it as hard as they can. So mm. That is a fundamentally different approach. I did, Raj, you say about the fundamentals, it was, I, I, I don't know if you guys um, listened to it, but Rob Key was saying in the Sky Sports Cricket Podcast that the fundamentals should already be there by, you get, by the time you get to international level. Is that where it might be going wrong? The fundamentals are definitely not there mm. by the time they're getting to international level. That's why they're struggling. They're struggling in spin. They're struggling in space. The only thing they don't struggle is if it's a white ball and an absolute road of a wicket. Mm. Right? Other than Root and Milan, who do you think if now forget it, change it. Now imagine this England side are playing against Anderson and Broad on a seeming wicket. Who mm. would you put money on to score runs against Anderson or Broad? Jerry, that's it. Or, or Milan. That's it. Yeah. That's it. That's where the fundamentals are. Mm. Okay. 
to yeah. play at the top level, you need strong fundamentals, especially in the Red Bull game. Mm. You can get away in the short form because, you know, if you top edge, you can bottom edge, you can inside edge, everyone will say, oh, well done because you got a four. But in this cricket, it doesn't happen that way. Mm. Right. That short format is a lot more predictable. The bowler can't bluff you. Here, the bowler can bluff you. Right. You have slips, gully, short legs here. Mm. In shorter format, you don't. Darren, so Raj is mentioning about white ball cricket. Do you think the 100 has got to blame for any of this? Not at the moment because it was only it's only been here for a few months, so I don't think it's been around white ball cricket in general, and um, because it's it's seen as a quick way to make a make a few pounds. It's a quick way to make money, and I'm going to go off track a little bit. But there's a really good documentary because Raj mentioned 2008 a little bit earlier. There's a really good documentary on at the moment on Sky about the Alan Sanford situation. Hmm. So this is a guy who in 2008 when England were struggling to keep their players, the Andrew Flintoffs and the Kevin Peterson, because they wanted to go and play in the IPL. But um, and I, there was an interview with Luke Wright, who got a phone call from Sachin Tendulkar. This is his words, not mine. So I know, you know, got a phone call from Sachin Tendulkar asking him to come and play for the Mumbai Indians. So he got in touch with the ECB bigwigs, who said, you can go, but you'll never play for England again. Mm. So he chose not to go. And this was the thing that, and they were, because they were so panicked about losing their players, that's why they took on this 20 million pound game with this Texan millionaire in the West Indies. And that's what that was all about, because they did actually sign up to play five years of this continually for five years. And that and guy's in prison. So, yeah. And that guy's a money launderer who's in prison for the rest of his life now. And so if you watch something like that, and you see how the ECB thinks. The ECB do not put cricket first, however much they say so, they put mm. pound notes first. Mm. But what they seem to fail to accept is that the biggest money spinner in this country is when England play test matches at home. No matter who's over here, England field grounds. Now, the moment England are losing a lot and being unsuccessful, we're successful at the moment at home because we've got conditions and seam bowlers to exploit those conditions. But the moment that stops happening, grounds are stopped filling up. And that's when test cricket will wane a little bit in this country, which does worry me a little bit. Raj, I tell you, go, sort of coming off topic a bit, going to Australia's batting, one player that has caught the eye of probably most of the world has been Marnus Labashain, who has left probably the best. I've, I Personally, I've seen a player really ever leave. Would you say this has been why Australia have been so good? Has he been a big part of that? Yeah, what has he got? Excellent fundamentals and mindset to bat. Mm. And I have heard in England coaches say, don't leave. Leaving is a cop-out. So how has that person who says leaving is a cop-out been given <laughs> that badge? I just don't understand. Mm. How can you give someone who says leaving a ball in cricket is a cop-out a badge? Tell me. That just beggars belief. Okay. Now, there is one thing no one is getting it, understanding why the problem, a lot of people are slagging off county cricket and saying, county cricket used to produce this uh, test pairs for England. County cricket, all these guys who won the Ashes, who went uh, went and won in India, they all went through county cricket. Yes, the quality of overseas players have dropped in county cricket. That is something different. And what used to happen previously is the gun overseas player used to come and play the whole season. That doesn't happen anymore. That is what has changed. Mm. Now, the other thing is, which people don't want to accept in England, First class cricket anywhere in the world, okay, do, does not put bums on seats. The job of the first class cricketer is to facilitate the guy who's going to play international cricket. That's why he exists. The job of the club player is to facilitate the first class player's existence. That's how you got to understand how it works. Mm. Now, because 
the English season was at a time when no other country used to play cricket. And because the gun overseas players used to come and play in England in the 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s, 2000s, what used to happen is first class cricket in England used to make money. Mm. The counties used to make money because of that. The only other first class scenario that made money was South Africa during their apartheid times because their gun players used to play provincial cricket. But once that goes, nowhere else in the world and currently the first class cricket will not be able to make money. The moment you see first class cricket as a tool of trying to generate profit, because you are tying your, uh, you're thinking your county is like Manchester United or Chelsea, you are living a dream, mm. right? It's not going to come true. Mm. So f- the job of first class cricket is to produce an international cricketer, not to make profits. Mm. And if that mindset happens, the international cricketer will come. Mm. Otherwise, you'll get T20 players. Darren, about a few months ago, we were lucky to have Jason Gillespie on this podcast, who you also interviewed, which was, which was probably, which was really good. Um, he came into the media the other day saying England need to sort their priorities out. You reading that, what do you think that means? Well, it means it means what it, it says on the tin. I think it means that. Um... Although the ECB pay a, pay a lot of lip service to the fact that they think Test match cricket is the pinnacle, they don't act that way, do they? I mean, I'll take another example. I've just heard on the news before I came in here that all of the England players who've been picked for the white ball tour of the West Indies have been pulled out of the Big Bash and flown to the West Indies now. Hmm. Now, at the moment, it's the 4th of January. The first game isn't until the 15th of January. So our white ball players are going to get a longer preparation for a 2020 series in the West Indies than these guys got for a test series against Australia. I mean, not just a test series, Mm. with all due respect to India, the other big nation, this is, as an Englishman, the test series. There isn't another one. I mean, as much as Raj would take the mickey out of me, I would take a 5-0 defeat to India every time just Mm. to win the Ashes every time. I'll take that every single time. But... This is the thing, which we, we mentioned this in the podcast a few months ago. Owen Morgan seems to get what he wants for his white ball team, which is why we need strong guys at the helm of the test uh, of test cricket, because Joe Root doesn't get what he wants, does he? So mm. this is a problem I have, which they do not see the EC, the, the ECB do not see test cricket as their priority. And that's what Jason Gillespie means. And I see him absolutely right. Yeah. Raj, would it be possible to franchise Red Bull cricket? I know. I don't is there any way Red Bull cricket could be like the hundreds? I don't think there is any need to do all that mm. reinventions. County cricket is good enough to produce, was good enough to play, produce international players, right? And it will be good enough. It's the mindset and how you go about the players' formative years and who you have in charge, what mindset you have. How is it, tell me this, why is it that when you see the Indian side, majority of their test players are playing T20 and one-day cricket. How are they playing three formats? How is Kane Williamson playing three formats? How is Steve Smith playing three formats. How did um, Ponting, Hayden, Hussey all play two formats or three formats when they were there? Just because their fundamentals were strong. They were not stereotyped from the age of nine to become a T20 player. Because if you use a young boy just to make him a T20 player so that your county can profit £5,000, then I think that's a lost cause. Darren, anything to add on that? Yeah, I'll jump on that. I mean, 
use India as an, ex an, like, as an example. Their test openers, although one of them's injured at the moment, KL Rahul and Rohit Sharma, both showed their fundamentals and how to play a swinging ball in very, very tough conditions in England during our summer against top quality swing bowlers in our conditions. And yet these are guys who are both very capable and especially KL Rahul of scoring, as if we go on to the modern coaches buzz thing of strike rates, of scoring 80s and 90s at strike rates of over 200 in the IPL as well. And they both have, as Raj said, extremely strong fundamentals. They're, but I mean, the basic is, does your back go up straight and come back down straight? That's the basics I look at. And I look at a lot of these England sides and I don't know whether Raj agrees, a lot of them defend from second slip to mid on. And if you defend from second slip to mid on, my opinion is a ball doesn't actually have to swing and it's still attacking your outside edge if your bat's coming across the line. I have a couple of things to ask you. Mm. So imagine you're now in year 13 at school. Mm. Okay, you are. So to write a 2000 word essay in English or to do trigonometry in school and get an A star, right? Will you be able to do that without strong basics fundamentals? No. No. Right? That's the first part. So you cannot go there. If you have strong fundamentals, you can go and do whatever you want as you progress. But that is the main area. Second area. You've got a GP in your um, village. Darren has got a GP in his town. I have got a GP in my town. Okay. Who qualified the GP? Tell me, who qualified the GP? University. Right. The guy who signed that he is good enough to go and um, hmm. you know, write prescriptions for you. What was that person? Was that a bank manager? Or would that person be a doctor? Doctor. Doctor, right. I just came back from Dubai the other day. The guy who flew my plane, right? Who would he have been qualified by? A pilot or an optician? For the most part, I didn't quite get that connection went. So the guy who flew the A380 from uh, Dubai, hmm. who who would have qualified him to fly the aircraft? A pilot? A pilot. Action. Right. Simple. So guys who've been there and done it need to be in positions of cricket coaching. Not anyone who fancies it or it's a hobby and comes into cricket coaching and messes up and then starts telling people leaving a ball is a cop out. Mm. Okay, so the, these fundamentals, both on the playing side and the coaching side, need to be taken care of. Look at Matt Pryor, what did he tweet the other day about the pathways? He said, mm. I'm fed up of, of seeing too many coaches kind and telling people to play funky shirts and whack balls for sixes. They need to do the basics right. Maram Prakash, every player who has been there and done it at international level, test level, will say exactly the same thing. Mm. Yeah. Do you have anything to add before we wrap, I wrap this up? Yeah, just to follow on from what Ross says, I'm a big believer that in pathway systems is where you need the better coaches to start with, your mm. ex-first class players. Whether that'll happen, I don't know, because I assume the money's not as good there, so that probably won't happen. But over the nine, ten years I've been coaching with Raj, we've had guys who've come from county systems, and you put them on a bowling machine at 60 miles an hour, and they won't get behind it. Mm. So it's, you know, it's that I, all I can do without, there's nothing really I can add to it, apart from saying I 100% agree, yeah. Raj, got any touch on? I know I want to make sure you got, you've said everything, well, that you can possibly say in the time we got. <sighs> So I'm sure you could go on for, for many more hours if you wanted to. No, the main thing is don't slag off Indian wickets. 
Oh, well. you, you've been holding on to that for a year, haven't you? <laughs> that, that 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 wasn't a wicket. That was an earthquake. But yeah, that will we'll leave that for another time. I, I, doesn't I matter, like. does it? You get a good wicket, you get out for seventy odd. That's right? it. No, Roger. I, I said I said at the start. I I agree with you. I completely agree. I think all it did, all it did, it showed up that well, this is showing up. We can't play on hard, fast, bouncy wickets, and it also mm. showed up the lack of um the lack of technique against spin bowling and who yeah. got runs last year in India on those wickets. Which one of our players got runs over there? Joe Root. Joe Root again. Yeah. So. Well, guys, thank you very much. Rod, yeah, carry on. Two things about Joe Root. Two main things. What does he have? Strong fundamentals and temperament to bat long. Mm. That's it. Mm. Yeah. Well, guys, all I can say is thank you for what I think has been quite, quite a good podcast. I think we've tried to touch on as much as we can and for the time we've had. So all I can say is a happy new year to everyone else. But you'd probably think England will hope 2022 will be a better year than 2021. Thank you. Thank you for listening.